Hey guys, my name is Gloria and welcome back to my channel where I review all kinds of books but mainly lean towards horror and also document my journey to becoming a published writer myself. Today I wanted to do a wrap up of July and August because I completely forgot to do them and I'm putting them together because I didn't really read that much in July anyway. Um, but I just wanted to give an overview of some of the books that I've read because I haven't been putting reviews of all of them. Uh, so I just wanted to, to see what those months looked for me in writing. So the reason I didn't read a lot in July is because I sectioned off July uh, to focus on my own writing and to try and do Camp NaNoWriMo. Um, it didn't work out so well. Uh, you can check out my video up here if you want to see how that went down. But I was supposed to not read at all and I just couldn't physically help myself. So I ended up reading uh, eight books, which was still too much. I shouldn't have been reading them, but <laughs> anywho, um, my writing's a little bit more on track now and I'm, I'm getting stuff done, but um, most of July was actually um, to do with the Horror in 24 readathon. I'll leave those videos um, up above as well. Uh, that was a readathon put on by a couple of booktubers that was great and it had a couple of prompts in it. So for that I read Remains by Andrew Cull, which is a very good book. I really liked it, really creepy, really well written. I also read The Boy Who Ate Fear Street, which was a real throwback to um, reading Goosebumps as a child. That was my most memorable one as a child of that kid eating the fleas off his dog's back. That just creeped the hell out of me. Uh, I also read Carnivorous Lunar Activities, which you should not buy. You should click on my review of that to see why you shouldn't buy it. Um, but that's by Max Booth the Third, and it was really interesting. A really new, unique take on werewolves and on friendships and childhood friendships that blossom into adult friendships. Um, Again, really well written and really interesting, so I would recommend it, but don't buy it. Along with that, in July I read a couple that I'd just been meaning to read for a while. Um, for my review blog I read Dead Woman Scorned uh, by Michael Clark, which was the sequel to his other book, which I can't remember the name of at the minute, but uh, again, really interesting, really unique kind of take on not really ghost story, not really not really what you're expecting. It's very, a very different book. So um, definitely look that one up if you're looking for something new. I also read a non-horror book called Filter This, uh, which is sort of about the toxic culture of um, Instagram and online, online presences and the the lies that we can perpetuate about ourselves. Which was really interesting, really funny, at times heartbreaking. It's written by Sophie White, um, an Irish writer and podcaster, she's very funny. Definitely recommend it for for non-horror purposes. Um, I also read a book called Stealing Thunder, which I think is my first, it shouldn't be, but I think it was my first um, trans story. So it's about a trans woman. Um, it's a fantasy story with dragons and with palaces and it's sort of set in um, southeastern culture. Um, so it's got a very sort of Indian feel um, and it was really good and it was really interesting and I really loved the character in it and I love the dragons. I gotta love me a dragon. Um, so I would definitely recommend that. I bought that one because I saw another tweet from uh, JK Rowling and I was like, you know what, I'm just, you're just, you're giving trans people a lot of traffic to their books. So that's the only good thing coming out of that. And the last one that I read in July was The Unforeseen by Dorothy McArdle. If you're interested in this book or any other McArdle books, I'm doing a, a three book bundle giveaway over on my Instagram, so you should definitely check out my Instagram for that. I did a review on this, I absolutely loved it, and it's one of my absolute favourite gothic um, novels, uh, so I'm not going to talk about it again, but you should definitely check that video out and check out my Instagram for that giveaway as well. In August I did read 
a few more. So in August I read 14 books. Um, I was sort of in a slump that I didn't really... Um, I was just annoyed I hadn't got any writing done in July like I was supposed to, so I think I was just annoyed at myself. But I did read 14 books. So again, a few of these were for the Horror and 24 Readathon because I joined late and I had to catch up. But most of them were for my review blog because those were the books that I I said to, that I was going to put to the side and I wouldn't be reading until August. Um, so I was supposed to not be reading at all, but then I just put aside the ones that I was supposed to be reading. But for the Horn 24 Readathon, I have videos up of these. I read the book of Gerald's Game um, as a psychological horror. Um, I'd seen the movie, really liked the movie. The book is pretty much the movie. The movie is very close to the book. Um, and it's really good, it's really well done. And I, I just really liked it, I really liked the characters. Um, I also read a big book of Irish ghost stories that turned out to be more Irish leprechaun stories. I mean, I've always grown up thinking that leprechauns were more funny little mischievous fairies um, instead of sort of scary stories, so I wanted a little bit less leprechaun, a little bit more ghost, but there were a couple of Darth Cardle and Sheridan Le Fanu in there as well. I also read Survivor Song, which was the group read for the Harlem 24 Readathon. That was my first apology Tremblay. Um, I... It is sort of a zombie movie, or sort of a zombie book. Um, I really liked his writing. I liked his characters. I wasn't, I wasn't a hundred percent sold on the book, but I think it was still good. Again, it was sort of a unique take on it. It wasn't a hundred percent a zombie story or a zombie novel. It wasn't exactly what you were probably expecting from a zombie story, but it was very interesting, and I am glad that I got to read it. I also read Queen of Coin and Whispers, which is another not horror book. It was a fantasy book written by an Irish woman, Helen Corcoran, and it is about a new queen to the throne who has to fix all the mistakes that her usurping uncle made, and she also happens to fall in love with a lady of the court who isn't as, as high up on the social ladder as her, and they both have to try and figure out how they can do their duties, can they actually be together, um, it's, it's a lesbian romance um, with a lot of spying and mysteries and secrets and moida. So if you're interested in that you should definitely give Queen of Coins and Whispers a look-see. Next up, um, my friend gave me this because we realised uh, at, at a socially distanced gathering that um, we were both into the same sort of book. We both have very different ideas about the book, but it's still a book that helped me a lot with uh, my anxiety and stuff. Um, and it's called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, or Eckhart Tolle, I'm not sure how to say his name, but she had a little illustrated um, book of his called The Guardians of Being, Spirit Teachings from our dogs and cats and um, it was just a lovely little illustrated book of some of his uh, Zen teachings and how to appreciate the world and how to not stress out and um, if you have a dog or a cat you can you can see them doing it right now they are not stressed about very much I'd assume um, so it was just a fun little short read that um, I have to return to her two more vampire novels which I did a full review on um, and I read these for my review blog, so I was given a free copy of these, was Nocturnal Blood and Nocturnal Farm by Villamy Mist. These are very interesting, very bloody, very gory, um, not romance focused that I'm so used to seeing with vampire novels now, um, and has a very interesting protagonist as well who just... people shouldn't leave her alone because she just keeps making mistakes but uh, it makes for a very interesting story so you should take a look at that review if you're interested in some new vampire novels. I also was having a conversation with my boyfriend. Um, he asked me if I knew what uh, H.P. Lovecraft's cat was called and of course a lot of people know this now um, and I was like yes he's very racist um, and he seemed to think that maybe because he got the cat when he was a kid that he didn't name it and he wasn't racist and I explained to him that he 
was certainly racist, but I'd never actually read any of his stories before. I've just, you know, everyone's heard of Lovecrafty and they've heard of Cthulhu and stuff. Um, but I've never actually read any of his stories. So I went and I read two short stories. One in particular was because it's the only one of his stories set in Ireland and it was apparently sort of very quickly written so that he could read it out at some gathering and uh, it's not very good, I'll be honest with you. Um, it's called The Moon Bog and given that he probably didn't do too many uh, drafts of it and apparently he didn't like the Irish either. He thought that uh, the British should rule the Irish and um, we're gonna have to disagree on that, Mr. Racist. Uh, also, the rats in the walls. The rats in the walls was um, sort of interesting. Again, it just it didn't give me anything to to say why other people love his writing so much. I don't know if there's a particular story. Um, that I should read to really get his full uh, scope of things. I just don't know if it would be really be my thing. And also, should we really be reading him if he's really that terrible a person in real life? It's just a question. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I should devote my time to reading um, so much of his work if I'm not gonna like it. So I don't know. I'll have to see in the future. I also read my first Anya Alborn, so I'll be doing a review of that very soon. Uh, it's called The Bird Eater. Uh, she's been on my list for a very long time and I recently bought the book and I wish I bought it sooner. That's all I'm gonna say. I really like her writing so I'm not gonna say anything more about the story but it's definitely a good book. And for my review blog um, I also read Grotesque Monster Stories, which is a collection by Lee Murray. It's very heavily influenced by Eritrea and uh, New Zealand mythology and their sort of origin stories. There's a lot of monsters and ghosts and sort of ghouls uh, in different settings and very, very heavy settings, very, um, you're straight in there with the setting, you're immersed in the entire world that's going on. Um, so those are very good, very interesting and I definitely learned a lot about uh, New Zealand as well. There was also the Vermilion Book of the Macabre, which I have four grotesque monsters and Vermilion Book, the Vermilion Book of the Macabre. Uh, I have those up on my WordPress blog at the minute. That one is written by Joe Polowski. Uh, that one is sort of interesting. All the stories are, are set in the same universe and it's sort of tied together by a prologue of a young girl finding this vermilion book that um, some entity has written down these horrible stories that have happened to people and it's, it's people being cursed, it's people losing their identity, people turning into horrible things, people being tortured into horrible things and uh, it's really well written. Um, it surprisingly, uh, I think he did say that he had sort of Irish ancestors, but the dialogue is very sort of colloquial and um, I was reading it in an Irish accent, the dialogue at least, so that was very interesting. But um, really good stories, really sort of chilling and and creepy. I also read Food Fright by Nico Bell. Um, I've been seeing these this on a lot of different people's channels and Instagrams and stuff. Um, sort of a, a fun, a fun horror, like a ridiculous kind of horror where food comes to life and starts killing people. Um, there's specific reasons for this and there's, there's two sets of people that are trying to stop this and they don't realise the other people are trying to stop it and, um, yeah, it's, it's set in high school, it's set with young people and some teachers and it was just not expect at all, not what I expected, but it was very funny, very well written and uh, a real sort of palate cleanser for the the darker, heavier stuff about grief and really sort of harrowing things I've been reading lately, so that one was really nice. And, and last up for the month of August, I also read Nightmare by Chad Nicholas. Uh, this was also for my blog. This was a very interesting story. It's a very unique story. It's about a 
a dad and a husband. He has, I think it's three kids. He has three kids and a wife. And when he was younger, um, a horrible thing happened to him. And he was kept captive in a very specific way uh, by a decidedly bad person. And because of that experience, he has certain mental health issues, psychological issues, and these are sort of coming back to the forefront um, with his family now. And as you're going through the story and bad thing after bad thing after bad thing is happening, you're sort of, you're getting more and more bits of information about his life, about his family's lives, about why things are the way they are. And it's, there are certain sequences where you think maybe he's hallucinating, maybe he's dreaming, is this real? You're not 100% sure the entire time until the very end and even then you're a little bit unsteady about the whole thing. So Nightmare is an app name I think, um, but it was very, very different. I am um, yet to write my review of that one, but it was definitely very different. Um, so I'm glad that I, I got to read that. That's another one sort of about, about grief and family as well. So I think I'm really happy with the books that I got to read. Um, I'm still catching up on my review blog on a few that I have to read um, and put up reviews for that. And I have, for my October, I did an announcement video with my my Instagram giveaway as well. Um, I'll leave that up above. Uh, I have a lot of videos planned for October just to celebrate the the month of spookiness and uh, I'm going to be doing a video every weekday, uh, hopefully. So I have to get uh, get filming on those, but I have a lot of uh, videos, I have a lot of books to read, um, to review and to do certain challenges and to recommend and whatnot. So I have a half month of September ahead of me where I have a lot of work to do, but I'm, I'm excited because I'm, I'm pushing myself to read a lot of books that I wouldn't have otherwise read so it's gonna be an interesting month of videos I think so thank you so much for watching thank you so much for my new subscribers thank you so much for the book dad who gave me a shout out on Twitter and on Instagram um, today you should definitely check him out for his videos on social media he has a lot of great suggestions for other booktubers as well I've also been shouted out by uh, Halo Thrifter recently as well, so I've seen um, a jump in subscribers. So thank you so much for checking out my videos and subscribing. I have a lot planned for the future. So let me know what you read in the last couple of months, if you've read any of the books I've read or if you have any recommendations based on that. Is there anything you'd like to see me review for October? Just let me know and I shall see you in the next video.